Good afternoon, and thank you very much for coming. Uh, this is um, representative of our legal team. We're representing uh, President Trump, and we're representing the Trump campaign. Uh, when I finish, uh, Sidney Powell and then and then Jenna Ellis will follow me, and we will present in brief the evidence that we've collected over the last, I guess it is two weeks. Also, uh, Joseph Jennifer, Victoria Tenzing are here with me. There are a lot more lawyers working on this, but we're the, I guess we're the, sh we're the senior lawyers, <laughs> and Boris Epstein. So, I guess the best way to describe this is when we began uh, our representation of the president, we, we certainly uh, were confronted with a very anomalous set of results. The president way ahead on election night, seven or 800,000 in Pennsylvania. Somehow he lost Pennsylvania. We have statisticians willing to testify that that's almost statistically impossible to have happened in the period of time that it happened. But of course, that's just speculation. As we started investigating, uh, both our investigations and the very uh, patriotic and brave American citizens that have come forward are uh, extraordinary. Extraordinary number of people, extraordinary number of witnesses. And what emerged very quickly is this is not a singular voter fraud in one state. This pattern repeats itself in a number of states. Almost exactly the same pattern, which um, to any experienced investigator, prosecutor, would suggest that there was a, a plan from a centralized place to execute these various acts of voter fraud specifically focused on big cities and specifically focused on, as you would imagine, big cities controlled by Democrats and particularly focused on big cities that have a long history of corruption. The number of voter fraud cases in Philadelphia could fill a library. Just a few weeks ago, there was a conviction for voter fraud, and one two weeks before that. And I've often said, I guess sarcastically, but it's true, the only surprise I would have found in this is if Philadelphia hadn't cheated in this election. Because for the last 60 years, they've cheated in just about every single election. You could say the same thing about Detroit. Each one of these cities are cities that are controlled by Democrats, which means they can get away with anything they want to do. It means they have a certain degree of control over, certainly control the election board completely, and they control law enforcement. And unfortunately, they have some friendly judges that will issue ridiculously irrational opinions just to come out in their favor. So let's start with the specifics. Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania, the margin of victory now for Biden, which is a not a victory, it's a fraud, is 69,140 votes. The reality is that we are now at a count of 682,770 ballots for which we have affidavits that there was no inspection of that ballot at the time that it was entered in the vote. It was a mail ballot. Mail ballots are particularly prone to fraud. We were warned about that by Jimmy Carter, President Jimmy Carter, and Secretary Baker in a report about a dozen years ago in which they said that mail balloting is particularly uh, susceptible of fraud, that we should very carefully consider ever doing it, and that it can be taken advantage of. Justice Souter warned us of the same thing in a comment in an election law case. And even the New York Times wrote articles about how uh, dangerous mail voting, mail in voting was. And um, this is the first time we ever did it en masse. And I think we proved that uh, all three are profits. It's not only susceptible to fraud, it is easily susceptible to fraud, particularly if you have a plan or scheme, which sounds eerily similar to what Joe Biden told us a few days before the election, that he had the best voter fraud team in the world. Well, they were good. I don't know that they, they were that good because they made 
significant mistakes, like all crooks do, and we caught them. One of them was pushing out Republican inspectors. Every state, almost every civilized country, even Tanzania and pl places you, know, you wouldn't think of, have uh, rules about inspectors, particularly for mail-in ballots. And why particularly for mail-in ballots? Because they can more easily be defrauded and you can't check on it. People who have never done a mail-in ballot, you, I'm going to show you why it's so easy. Well, you fill out an envelope like this. You put your, usually in, in New York it would be your, your assembly district and the, and the precinct in which you're voting. You fill out your name and your address and you sign it. You then use an inner envelope and you put the ballot inside the inner envelope. You seal it all and you send it in. When it's being, when it's being counted, almost invariably in the United States, up until the mass cheating that went on in this election, a Republican and a Democrat inspector, as well as others, if there are other parties, is allowed to watch the unsealing of this ballot. Used to go on all over America when we conducted honest elections. Because the only time you can ever find out if it's a fraudulent ballot is when it is looked at. The minute you approve this, it's thrown away, gone for eternity. The only thing left is the vote. That could have been Mickey Mouse. That could have been a dead person. That could have been not filled out properly. That could have been the same person 30 times. That could have been, and all these things have happened, by the way. That could have been um, nothing filled out. We'd never know. So for example, the recount being done in Georgia will tell us nothing because these fraudulent ballots <laughs> will just be counted again because they wouldn't supply the signatures to match the ballots. So it means nothing to have counted these ballots because, for example, in Pennsylvania, where we have probably our most precise evidence, 682,770 of these ballots were cast, put in, and they weren't inspected, which renders them uh, ballots that are null and void, cannot be counted, have to be removed from the, from the vote. Uh, why? For several reasons, not the least of which is that was basically only one of two places in the state where it was done. So in the other parts of the state, there was a legitimate inspection of the ballots. So if you have two different standards in different parts of the state, one favoring one part of the state, the other disfavoring the other part of the state, that's a classic violation of the Equal Protection Clause of the United States Constitution. Uh, Bush v. Gore being the most recent case that, uh, that, that teaches that. Uh, that's not the only fraud that went on in Pennsylvania. All of the other frauds carried out in the other states by the Democrat uh, bosses uh, happened there as well. For example, if you made a mistake in that ballot and you lived in Philadelphia or in Pittsburgh, uh, you were allowed to fix the mistake. But if you lived in the what would be considered more Republican or Trump par parts of the state, you were given no such uh, right. One of our plaintiffs, Mr. Henry, cast a absentee ballot, and he failed to put it in the secure envelope inside. He just put it in open, naked. That ballot was cast aside because it was invalid because that breaks the um, privacy of the, of, of the vote. In Pittsburgh and in Philadelphia, if they noticed that there wasn't an inner envelope, they'd contact the voter and allow him to vote again. Or if he didn't fill it out completely, or if he made a mistake and didn't sign his full name, he was allowed to cure it. There is no such provision under the law of Pennsylvania. The Democrat Secretary of State made that up in order to maximize the votes in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh and to minimize the votes in the other parts of the state. Clearly illegal, clearly voter fraud, easily provable, 
hundreds of witnesses, maybe thousands. We have, um, to give you another example, we have 17,000 provisional ballots cast in Pittsburgh. Do you know what a pro provisional ballot is? Provisional ballot usually happens this way, and about 15 of the 17,000 happen this way. You walk in and you say, I'm here to vote today. Oh, Mr. Giuliani, you already voted. I did? I don't remember voting. Oh, yes, yes, you cast an absentee ballot. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. So why does that happen 17,000 times in Pittsburgh? People walked in thinking, they actually 15,000 to be precise, why did it happen 15,000 times that people in Pittsburgh walked in to vote and they had already voted according to the Democrat election machine? Did they forget that many people with uh, bad memories in Pittsburgh? Or is the following correct? That uh, as witnesses will testify, they were instructed by the Democrat bosses when they had a ballot in which there was no one registered, just assign it to somebody. Just assign it to Rudy Giuliani. So when Rudy Giuliani, maybe Rudy Giuliani won't show up to vote. And if he does show up to vote, we'll give him a provisional ballot. That is what we call circumstantial evidence of the fraud. The direct evidence of the fraud of the people who will testify that in fact that's what happened to them. As well as the 50 to 60 witnesses we have for the way they were treated and not allowed to inspect the ballots. They weren't just um, not allowed to do it. They were pushed. A few cases they were assaulted. In all cases they were put in a corral so far away, probably the closest they got is from here to the back of that room. We could do like a, uh, did you all watch My Cousin Vinny? Did you know the movie? My, it's one of my favorite uh, law movies because he comes from Brooklyn. And uh, when the, the nice lady who said she saw, and then he, uh, he, he says to her, how many fingers do I, how many fingers do I got up? And she says, uh, three. Well, she was too far away to see it was only two. These people were further away than my cousin Vinny was from the witness. They couldn't see a thing. Now, I don't know. You're going to tell me that 60 people are lying? They, they, they didn't just tell me this. They swore under penalty of perjury, which is something no Democrat's ever done. <laughs> you don't even ask Biden about this. <laughs> you don't put, put him under penalty of perjury. He, he doesn't even get asked questions about it. He doesn't get asked questions about all, all the evidence of the crimes that he committed. These people are under penalty of perjury. Their names are on an affidavit. They swear that they weren't allowed to carry out their function as inspectors. And it's not just a technical thing. There's a reason they did it. Why would you not allow people to carry out the function they've been allowed to do for 50 years, 60 years? Why wouldn't you allow inspections of those ballots? because you knew you were going to use those ballots to catch Biden up. And you had a big road ahead of you. You had to catch him up for 700,000 to 800,000 votes that he was behind. And the only way you were going to do it were with the mail-in ballots. You couldn't have a Democrat and Republican inspector around. They don't even have Democrats watching it, because they'd be afraid that they'd be honest Democrats who would say, you're cheating. So that takes us to Michigan, where there was an honest Democrat who said they were cheating. And we'll show you her affidavit, because I know you keep reporting falsely that we have no evidence, that we have no specific acts of fraud. That's because the coverage of this has been almost as dishonest as the scheme itself. The American people are entitled to know this. You don't have a right to keep it from them. You don't have a right to lie about it, and you are. I mean, you don't report to them that a citizen of this country, a very fine woman, who is willing to allow me to give, her, uh, give you her name, 
I can't give you all these affidavits because if I do, these people will be harassed. They'll be threatened. They may lose their job. They will lose their friends. We've lost lawyers in this case because they've been threatened. We've had lawyers that need protection. What's going on in this country is horrible, and the censorship that you're imposing is making it worse. But Jesse Jacob is an adult citizen and a resident of the state of Michigan. She's been an employee of the city of Detroit for decades. I know her age, but she, she can tell you her age. She was, um, she was assigned to uh, voting duties in September, and she was trained by the city of Detroit and the state of Michigan. She was basically trained to cheat. She said that um, I was instructed by my su supervisor to adjust the mailing date of these absentee ballot packages to be dated earlier than when they were actually sent in. The supervisor made that announcement for all workers to engage in that fraudulent practice. That's not me saying that. That's this American citizen saying that under oath. I don't know. Maybe you could say she's lying. But you can't say there's no evidence. This is what we call evidence. This is direct evidence. And that's circumstantial. I tried many, many cases, as did all my colleagues here. You put a witness on a witness stand, the witness is testifying to their own knowledge. This witness goes on the witness stand and she will say, I was told to adjust the date on the absentee ballots. I witnessed election workers and employees going over to the voting booths with voters in order to watch them vote and coach them for whom to vote. Completely illegal. She will testify to that. I don't know. Biden's people can cross-examine her. But you can't just throw it away. Gee, there's no evidence. Next time you say that, you'll be lying. Because there is evidence. This, oh, by the way, this is public. You can all get it. It's attached to the complaint in Costantino versus the city of Detroit. Then she was instructed by my supervisor not to ask for a driver's license or any photo ID when a person was trying to vote. Don't ask for identification. Why would you not ask for identification? Because you knew that a lot of people not entitled to vote were going to come in and early vote. Because you knew that illegal immigrants were going to be allowed to vote. You knew, if you lived in Philadelphia, unless you're do not, that's an Italian expression for stupid, unless you're stupid, you knew that a lot of people were coming over from Camden to vote. They do every year. Happens all the time in Philly. It's about as frequent as getting beaten up at a Philadelphia Eagle basketball, uh, football game. Happens all the time. All the time. And it's allowed to happen because it is a Democrat, corrupt city and has been for years, many, many years. And they carried it out in places they could get away with it. They didn't carry it out in neutral places. They didn't carry it out in Republican places. They didn't carry it out where the law is respected. They carried it out in, corrupt, in a corrupt city where the district attorney releases criminals en masse, which is why it has so much crime. She also said, I observed a large number of people who came to the satellite location to vote in person, but they had already applied for and submitted an absentee ballot. So, so she observed a lot of people voting twice. Again, this is Jesse Jacob, not me. I was instructed not to, valid, not to invalidate any ballots and not to look for any deficiency in the ballots. Why would you do that? Because you're cheating. On purpose, cheating. Intentionally cheating. You're cheating as an institution. This is an instruction from the election commission or the, the employer to, to the worker. Don't look for any deficiencies in the ballots. I was instructed not to look at any of the signatures <laughs> the absentee ballots. If she was instructed to look, f not to look for any of the signatures on the absentee ballots, 
Why the heck do you sign it in the first place? In order to identify it. She was instructed not to do that because many of the absentee ballots were fraudulent, and they knew that, and they didn't want to have a count of that. On November 4, 2020, I was instru instructed to improperly predate the absentee ballots when the receipt date was actually November, was, was after November 3, 2020. Now, this is really significant because Justice Alito of the Supreme Court instructed Pennsylvania, that any ballot that comes in after 8 o'clock on November 3rd, 2020, had to be put aside and not opened, because there's a question as to its legality and its constitutionality. What she's telling you is that they blatantly disregarded that order, that they took ballots that were marked the 4th and the 5th and the 6th, and they marked it down for the 3rd, in blatant disregard of the order of the United States Supreme Court. This is, this is, uh, I don't know if she's a Democrat or Republican. I assume if she's working, if she's working for the, I, mean, I assume if she's working for the city of Detroit that she's a Democrat. I assume, but I may be wrong. She's a citizen. I've, I've never met her, never coached her. And I'd like you to note that it's signed under penalties of perjury. We have a hundred more of these. I can't show them to you because those people don't want to be harassed. They don't want to be, have their lives torn apart by the goons on the other side. We don't do that to them. They've done that to a lot of our people. And they've done it for four years. And it's outrageous that it's tolerated and it's tolerated because you condone it in the press and you don't cover it and you don't condemn it. And it shouldn't happen to a Republican or a Democrat. A lawyer shouldn't have to withdraw from a case because he's representing the President of the United States. There are many more affidavits here. I'd like to read them all to you, but I don't have the time. You should have had the time and energy to go look for them. That's your job. Like it's my job to defend the President and to represent the President. It's your job to read these things and not falsely report that there's no evidence. Do you know, how, you know how many affidavits we have in the Michigan case? 220 affidavits. They're not all public, but eight of them are. F four affiants here, those are people who give affidavits, report an incident that under any other circumstances would have been on the front page of all your newspapers if it didn't involve the hatred that you have, the irrational pathological hatred that you have for the president. What they swear to is that at 4.30 in the morning, a truck pulled up to the Detroit center where they were count counting ballots. The people thought it was food, so they all ran to the truck. It wasn't food. It was thousands and thousands of ballots. And the ballots were in garbage cans. They were in paper bags. They were in cardboard boxes. And they were taken into the center. They were put on a number of tables. At that time, they thought all the Republican inspectors had left, all but two had, and an employee of Dominion, who uh, we will address a little bit later, Dominion. And here's what they jointly swear to, that every ballot that they could see, every thing they could hear, these were ballots for Biden. When they saw a ballot, these were ballots only for Biden, meaning there was no down ticket, just Biden. Many of them didn't have anything on the outer envelope because these ballots were produced very quickly, very swiftly, and they're estimated to be a minimum of 60,000, maximum of 100,000. Many of them were triple counted, which means they were put into the counting machine this way. Once, twice, Three times. I didn't see that. I don't know that, but for the fact that three American citizens are willing to swear to it. And we're not going to let them go to court and do that? We're going to let this election go by when there are, in this case, 60 witnesses that can prove what I'm saying to you and other acts of fraud in Michigan? 
I mean, what's happened to this country if we're going to let that happen? What happened to this country if we're going to cover that up? We let Al Gore carry on an election dispute longer than this one has been going on for one state and for Chad's. This happened in Pennsylvania. It happened in Michigan. Michigan probably right now, if I count up the affidavits, just one case alone, Trump v. Benson, a case that we dismissed today because mm -hmm. that case was attempting to get the Wayne County Board of Supervisors to decertify. Well, they did. They decertified. That case has 100 affidavits. And the 100 affidavits show essentially what I've uh, talked to you about. Counting ballots improperly, counting them three and four times, uh, having, people, having people vote three and four times, changing and backdating ballots to the point of at least 300,000 illegitimate ballots that we can specifically identify. The margin in Michigan was 146,121. And these ballots were all cast basically in Detroit that Biden won 80-20. So you see it changes as a result of the, of the, of the election in, in Michigan if you take out Wayne County. So it's a very significant case. That is being raised in the case of Costantino versus the city of Detroit. Not by us, but by an individual plaintiff. We are helping and assisting in that case, however. And you can find all the affidavits that you want filed in that case. And you can find out they're not just allegations, they're allegations supported by sworn testimony, which is a lot better than Joe Biden has ever done on anything. He doesn't answer questions, much less give you sworn affidavits. Wisconsin. Wisconsin had a very small margin, 20,544 20, last time I looked. In Wisconsin, Without going into great detail, very similar plan. Uh, Republicans shut out in the city of Milwaukee and also in Madison. Republicans almost uniformly shut out from the absentee process, not allowed to inspect, not allowed to look at the ballots. We have in Milwaukee and in the state of Wisconsin a much stricter law. Wisconsin doesn't allow mail-in ballots. They didn't buy into the big mail-in ballot situation. Wisconsin, when you look at their constitution, almost seems to not like absentee ballots. They state it's not a right, a privilege. And they have very, very strict procedures. And the strict procedure says that you can't be given an absentee ballot. You have to personally apply for it. It's illegal, basically, to solicit a vote. And they have actually r many reasons for it that probably goes back to their, their progressive days. When I say progressive, I mean late 19th century, early 20th century progressive, when that really meant progressive, not retrogressive. So there are 60,000 ballots in Milwaukee County and 40,000 ballots in Madison that as far as we can tell, and this is why we've, we're auditing, because we have very good information that the numbers are going to come out about here that don't have applications. Under the law of the state of Wisconsin, already decided, if there's no application for an absentee ballot, the absentee ballot is thrown away. This all happened in two places <laughs> in Wisconsin. Didn't happen in northern Wisconsin. Didn't happen in Republican Wisconsin. It didn't happen in neutral Wisconsin, where there are an equal number of Republicans and Democrats. It happened in a place where the vote was 75, 80 percent for the Democrat. You take away any number of those, and that 20,000 lead disappears. In other words, if you count the lawful votes, Trump won Wisconsin by a good margin. Indeed, if you count the lawful votes in Pennsylvania, he won it by about 300,000 votes. Also, in the, in the lawsuit filed in Wisconsin, which is really a petition because of their uh, procedures, there were no, no inspectors provided for the count of the illegal ballots. There were numerous backdated ballots. We're just counting them now, run over into the thousands. And there were many precincts in which there was an overvote. Now, let me explain to you what an overvote is. 
which is something you should have explained to the American people because it's about the clearest circumstantial evidence of massive fraud that you can have. An overvote is if 200% of the people who are registered in a district vote. Think about that. 200% of the registered voters in a district vote. What does that mean? That means somebody voted twice. That means somebody who's not entitled to vote voted, an illegal, a person from another city or state, a person who's not registered. <laughs> but what it means is that those are illegitimate votes. You don't have an overvote of 200% or 300%. You don't have an overvote of 100%. Most, most uh, precincts don't have 100% turnout. In fact, classically, it's considered to be an overvote if you go over 80%. Well, in Michigan and Wisconsin, we have overvotes in numerous precincts of 150%, 200%, and 300%. One of the reasons why the two Republicans did not certify in Wayne, uh, Michigan, Wayne County, Michigan, is because the overvote was so high, monstrously high, in about two-thirds of the precincts in the city of Detroit, which means magically two and three times the number of registered voters turned out to vote. In fact, we have precincts in which two times the number of people who live there, including children, voted. That's absurd. The frustration of this is, what I'm describing to you is a massive fraud. It isn't a little teeny one. It isn't, you know, 100 votes switched here or there. Georgia, we're about to file a major lawsuit in Georgia. That'll be filed probably tomorrow. I don't need to go through it. Virtually the same things I've told you before. Very, very in, in the city of Atlanta, Republicans were not allowed to watch the absentee mail-in ballot process. Inspections com completely cast aside. And we have numerous double voters. We have numerous out-of-state voters. And we have uh, specific evidence of intimidation and changes of vote. That'll all be in the lawsuit that comes out tomorrow. Arizona is a, is a state that we're looking at very, very carefully. I would say we're probably going to bring a lawsuit in Arizona, more than probably. I think we are going to bring a lawsuit in Arizona. We're still collecting that evidence. And the state that we're looking at that would surprise you is we have very, very significant amount of fraud allegations in the state of New Mexico, uh, which and we have a significant number of allegations in the state of Virginia. I don't know yet whether the number in Virginia will reach the number that can turn uh, the election. In the states that we have indicated in red, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Nevada, and Arizona, we more than double the number of votes needed to overturn the election in terms of provable illegal ballots. All you got to do to find out if I'm misleading you at all, is to look at the lawsuits. Look what's alleged. Look at the affidavits. Maybe we can supply more affidavits. In order to do it, I have to get permission from the people. But in the materials I have here, there are at least 10 that come from citizens. We have, th we have a 1,000 at least. And we're getting more every day. And there are other aspects of this fraud that at this point, I really can't reveal. <laughs> this is really enough. It's enough to overturn any election. It's disgraceful what happened. And I'll conclude by asking you to just think about this for a minute. What happened on the morning of November 3rd when they were going to count the, these, this new kind of ballot, this mail-in ballot? Did every Democrat leader in Pennsylvania and in Michigan and in Wisconsin and in Georgia and in Nevada and in Arizona they all wake up and all separately have the same idea? Do they all separately have the idea that we are going to, we're going to put Republican inspectors in pens? We're not going to let them look at mail-in or absentee ballots? They all independently come up with that. Like 
just by coincidence. They said, hey, you know, we're going to put... We're going to put the Republicans in pens and corrals. We're going to do it in Pittsburgh. We're going to do it in Philadelphia. We're going to do it in Detroit. We're going to do it in Milwaukee. We're going to do it in Las Vegas. We're going to do it in Phoenix. What did I miss? Oh, we're going to do it in Atlanta. Or isn't the logical conclusion that I think any jury would accept if they heard this evidence that somebody had this plan? Maybe that was always the plan, to do these, this very, very questionable form of voting, which has been criticized by President Carter, by Secretary Baker, by most experts on election reform. I think the logical conclusion is this is a common plan, a common scheme. It comes right directly from the Democrat Party, and it comes from the candidate. Clearly. That's the reason why Hillary Clinton said, don't concede, even if you're losing. That's the reason we had a Freudian slip by the candidate. And he said he had the best voter fraud team in the country. That's the reason why he probably didn't have to go out and campaign. <laughs> he had to have known what they were going to do. This had to be planned in advance. I'm, ki I'm kind of checking, did they go you know, to the same contractor to get the corrals to put the Republicans in? And this is a disgraceful thing that was done in this country. Probably not much more disgraceful than the things these people did in office, which you didn't and don't bother to cover and you conceal from the American people. But we let this happen. You know, we use largely a Venezuelan uh, voting machine, in essence, to count our vote. We let this happen, we're going to become Venezuela. We cannot let this happen to us. We cannot allow these crooks, because that's what they are, to steal an election from the American people. They elected Donald Trump. They didn't elect Joe Biden. Joe Biden is in the lead because of the fraudulent ballots, the illegal ballots that were produced and that were allowed to be used after the election was over. Give us an opportunity to prove it in court, and we will. Now I'm going to ask uh, Sidney Powell to describe to you what we can describe about another totally outrageous situation. I don't think most Americans know that our ballots get calculated, many of them, outside the United States and are completely open to hacking, completely open to change. And it's being done by a company that specializes <laughs> in voter fraud. I'll let Sydney describe that to you. Thank you, Rudy. What we are really dealing with here and uncovering more by the day is the massive influence of communist money through Venezuela, Cuba, and likely China in the interference with our elections here in the United States. The Dominion voting systems, the Smartmatic technology software, and the software that goes in other computerized voting systems here as well, not just Dominion, were created in Venezuela at the direction of Hugo Chavez to make sure he never lost an election after one constitutional referendum came out the way he did not want it to come out. We have one very strong witness who has explained how it all works. His affidavit is attached to the pleadings of Lynn Wood in the lawsuit he filed in Georgia. <clears throat> it is a stunning, detailed affidavit because he was with Hugo Chavez while the, he was being briefed on how it worked. He was with Hugo Chavez when he saw it operate to make sure the election came out his way. That was the express purpose for creating this software. He has seen it operate, and as soon as he saw the multiple states shut down the voting at the, on the night of the election, he knew the same thing was happening here, that that was what had gone on. Now, the software itself was created with so many variables and so many back doors that can be hooked up to the internet or a thumb drive stuck in it or whatever, 
but one of its most characteristic features is, is its ability to flip votes. It can set and run an algorithm that probably ran all over the country to take a certain percentage of votes from President Trump and flip them to President Biden, which we might never have uncovered had the votes for President Trump not been so overwhelming in so many of these states that it broke the algorithm that had been plugged into the system. And that's what caused them to have to shut down in the states they shut down in. That's when they came in the back door with all the mail-in mail -in ballots, many of which they had actually fabricated. Some were on pristine paper with identically matching uh, perfect circle dots for Mr. Biden. Others were shoved in in batches. They're always put in in a certain number of batches and people would rerun the same batch. This corresponds to our statistical evidence that shows incredible spikes in the vote counts at particular times. And that corresponds to eyewitness testimony of numerous people who have come forward and said they saw the ballots come in the back door at that time. Notably, the Dominion executives Ha, are nowhere to be found now. They are moving their offices overnight to different places. Their office in Toronto was shared with one of the Soros entities. One of the uh, leaders of the Dominion project in overall is Lord Malik Brown, Mr. Soros number two person in the UK and part of his organization. There are ties of the Dominion leadership to the Clinton Foundation and to other known politicians in this country. Just to give you a brief description of how this worked, I'm gonna quote from a, a, <clears throat> a letter that was written and I will uh, read that to make sure I get the quotes right. This person was objecting to the United States acquisition of Sequoia voting systems by Smartmatic, a foreign owned company. I believe this transaction raises exactly the sort of foreign ownership issues that CFIUS is best positioned to examine for national security purposes. It's undisputed that Smartmatic is foreign owned and it has acquired Sequoia. They keep changing the names as they go along different times when a problem comes up. They just create another corporation and call it a different name but it was a voting machine company doing business in the United States. Sequoia, Sequoia voting machines were used to record over 125 million votes during the 2004 presidential election in the United States. Smartmatic now acknowledges that Antonio Mujica, a Venezuelan businessman, has controlling interest in Smartmatic, but the company has not revealed who all the Smartmatic owners are. According to the press, Smartmatic's owners are hidden through a web of offshore private entities, and that is, in fact, true. Smartmatic has been associated with the Venezuelan government led by Hugo Chavez, which is openly hostile to the United States, and of course, as we all know, communistic and really uh, brutalizing its own people. The system has been continued there by Mr. Maduro and ensured his election. Smartmatic's possible connection to the Venezuelan government poses a potential national security concern in the context of its acquisition of Sequoia because electronic voting machines are susceptible to tampering and insiders are in the best position to engage in such tampering. This letter expresses concern of the Chicago 20, 2006 primary election. And it ends by saying the, the products and services that are of Venezuelan origin and evaluate Smartmatic's ownership to determine who could have influence and control over these and other Sequoia products and services are important to the national security of the United States. This letter was written to Hank Paulson on October 6, 2006 by Congresswoman Carolyn B. Maloney. Cong uh, Senators uh, Klobuchar and Warren have raised these concerns as recently as December 2019. Why our government has not taken them seriously is beyond my comprehension, unless they have some of the three-letter agencies have used them themselves in other parts of the world. We know that the technology was exported to affect an election in Argentina. That's admitted by our friend who wrote the affidavit about Hugo Chavez and his interest in Smartmatic. Again, in uh, 2006, uh, Carolyn Maloney wrote the Honorable John Snow, the Secretary of the Treasury, about the issues. 
speaking of uh, Smartmatic's leadership, one of the Smartmatic uh, patent holders, Eric Coomer, I believe his name is, is on the web uh, as being recorded in a conversation with Antifa members uh, saying that the, he had the election rigged for Mr. Biden, nothing to worry about here, and he was going to, they were going to F Trump. His social media is filled with hatred for the president and for the United States of America as a whole, as are the social media accounts of many other Smartmatic people. There has been widespread use of this. Uh, Dominion itself is utilized in 2,000 jurisdictions in 30 states. It has been uncertifiable in multiple states who realized all the problems that it had, including Texas. Experts have described it across the board from a, Prin a Princeton group of three professors to uh, experts that we have talked to about its end user vulnerabilities. People can admittedly go in and change whatever they want. They can set the ratio of votes from one thing to another. They can say that uh, a Biden vote counts as 1.25 and a Trump vote counts as 0.75. And those may be the numbers that were actually used here. It's not just the swing states that were affected. The algorithm was likely run across the country to affect the entire election. Like I said, we only discovered it this year because of the overwhelming number of votes for President Trump in the swing states that caused the machines to have to shut down for them to backfill uh, for adding votes. We have evidence of different numbers of votes being injected into the system, the same identical, unique six-digit number multiple times in at least two states that we've analyzed so far, and I'm talking about like 341,542 votes for Biden and 100,012 for Trump. Um, there's no explanation, no logical explanation for the same numbers being injected 20 minutes apart into the machine. The software manual itself, you can download it from the internet, and I would encourage you all to read it because it specifically advertises some of these things as features of the system. Why it was ever allowed into this country is beyond my comprehension, and why nobody has dealt with it is absolutely appalling. The machines were easily accessible to hackers. There's a video on the net that it will explain to you how a kid with a cell phone can hack one of these voting machines. There's been no oversight of Dominion or its software. Workers in each county were trained by Dominion, but there's no evidence of any monitoring otherwise. We have testimony of different workers admitting that they were trained how to uh, dispose of Trump votes and uh, add to Biden votes. The software has a feature pursuant to which you can drag and drop any number of batches of votes to the candidate of your choice or simply throw them away. So we have mathematical evidence in a number of states of massive quantities of Trump votes being trashed, just simply put in the trash like you would on your computer with any file, and uh, Biden votes being injected. That's addition to the flipping. I mean, it really happens in two ways. There's an algorithm that runs that automatically flips all the votes, and then each operator has the ability to go in uh, override settings, they can ignore a signature, they can ignore the, the top line of the ballot, they can go down ballot and select who they want to change the results for. Mr. Um, Maji, Ma, the gentleman who founded Smartmatic, there's video of him on the internet explaining that yes, in at least uh, one occasion he admits they changed a million votes uh, with no problem. Many of the jurisdictions that have had this problem might not have known of the issues, but many did. And I think a full-scale criminal investigation needs to be undertaken immediately by the Department of Justice and by every state's equivalent, Attorney General's Office or State Investigatory Unit, because there, are, there is evidence of different benefits being provided to the people who spent $100 million of taxpayer money at the last minute for their state to get the Dominion voting systems put in in time for this election in different ways. Uh, there's one person that a lawyer told me got, quote, election insurance, um, meaning that he would uh, be able to make sure he was elected 
I'm sure they explained that feature in detail to many people who expressed interest in putting this voting system in. Texas denied certification of the Dominion system in 2019, but there are no doubt issues with the software that Texas did use, unbeknownst to Texas, I would imagine, since they went to great trouble to examine the Dominion systems and reject them. But other software, the source code that does the alterations is embedded, we have been told, in the source code all across the country in all the voting machines. There's no doubt it has been used to alter elections in other countries. Um, we know specifically that Venezuela exported it for that purpose to Argentina and other Latin American companies to make sure that the corrupt rulers who were willing to pay the highest price for being in office were allowed to rig their elections. This is stunning, heartbreaking, infuriating, and the most unpatriotic acts I can even imagine for people in this country to have participated in in any way, shape, or form. And I want the American public to know right now that we will not be intimidated. American patriots are fed up with the corruption from the local level to the highest level of our government, and we are going to take this country back we are not going to be intimidated. We are not going to back down. We are going to clean this mess up now. President Trump won by a landslide. We are going to prove it, and we are going to reclaim the United States of America for the people who vote for freedom. How come you're not suing in the Wisconsin counties that use this? Why are you only doing a recount? Um, and excuse me that we're not out to the questions at this point. Um, so excuse me, we're not at the questions at this point. M uh, my name is Jenna Ellis, and I'm the senior legal advisor uh, to the Trump campaign. And I'd like to just explain now uh, where we've been and where we're at and what you can expect from this process. So what you have heard, I'm sure, in the fake newspapers tomorrow will be one of two things. Either there was not sufficient evidence that we've presented or we spoke too long. Okay, so what you've heard now is an, basically an opening statement. This is what you can expect to see when we get to court to actually have a full trial on the merits, to actually show this evidence in court and prove our case. This is not a law and order episode where everything is neatly wrapped up in 60 minutes. For those of you who are here in this room or have maybe tuned out in other networks, clearly you've never been court reporters. Trials take time. Putting on evidence takes time. This is basically an opening statement so the American people can understand what the networks have been hiding and what they refuse to cover because all of your fake news headlines are dancing around the merits of this case and are trying to delegitimize what we are doing here. Let me be very clear that our objective is to make sure to preserve and protect election integrity. President Trump has been saying from day one that this is about maintaining free and fair elections in this country. It is not about overturning an outcome. It is about making sure that election integrity is preserved, and every American should want that. If every American is not on board with that, you have to ask yourself why. And if your fake news network is not covering this or allowing you to cover it fairly and accurately, you should ask yourself why. This is absolutely a legitimate legal basis. We have been asked to provide an entire case that generally would take years in civil litigation. I've been a prosecutor. I have tried cases with far simpler facts. One thing happened in a matter of minutes, and it still takes days. And we go through a jury process. This is the court of public opinion right now. We are not trying our case in the court of public opinion. Because if we were, we would get unbiased jurors. I would strike 99% of you from the jury, and I would be allowed to because of the fake news coverage you provide. You are not unbiased jurors. And until you step out of your role as a journalist and actually go into a courtroom and you are a judge on a bench that has sworn an oath to be unbiased in our separation of powers, then your opinion does not matter. The facts matter, the truth matters, and if you are fair reporters, you will cover that fairly and appropriately, and you will allow coverage of our media team.
here and our legal team. That is absolutely shocking that all you cover are around the margins and I've seen all of you taking pictures right now and I can anticipate what your headlines are going to be. If you are not willing to talk about the evidence that has been presented, then that is absolutely unacceptable for journalistic standards. This is an opening statement. This is something where we have told you what the evidence will show and we have given you a brief description. That happens in a courtroom all the time where that's not the fact-finding process. That is just an overview. That is what we have given you today because the American people deserve to know what we have uncovered in the last couple of weeks. Remember, this is such a short time frame. And this is an elite strike force team that is working on behalf of the president and the campaign to make sure that our Constitution is protected. We are a nation of rules, not a nation of rulers. There is not someone that just gets to pick who the next president is outside the will of the American people. And that is our task because when we talk about voter fraud, it's actually election official fraud. That cannot stand. The Constitution requires that the state legislatures are the ones that make election law. It still has to go by the U.S. Constitution. But what has happened in this case is that state and local level officials and all the way up have changed the rules. That's what the Democrats do. If they don't like the rules, they change them. And they change them at the last minute. They manipulate them. They want to tear down our American system. Our founders were so brilliant that they anticipated this, that there would be corruption, there would be foreign influence, there would be attempts to manipulate the outcome of the election, especially with who they called our chief magistrate. I would encourage all of you to go home and actually read Alexander Hamilton's Federalist 68 and see what he described as an advocacy position to adopt and ratify the electoral college and the process by which we select our president. We select our president through the electoral college not because it disenfranchises voters, but because it is a security mechanism for exactly the type of corruption that we are uncovering. And every American should be grateful and thankful that our founders had the foresight to put in those protections and provisions to make sure that your legitimate legal vote is not disenfranchised. That is what we are advocating for. We want to make sure to protect election integrity and your president, President Trump, we are so proud that he is in this fight because he understands that when he swore his oath of office, he swore an oath to uphold and defend the United States Constitution. That is what he is doing. And that is what we are doing. We are confident that through this multiple pathway to victory, we will get to the actual outcome that the evidence shows. But this is not about overturning an election on our part. It's about making sure that we protect and preserve free and fair elections for all future American elections. If the United States caves to corruption or this type of election integrity disaster, then no election will be secure from here on out. And we all need to be keenly aware of that. We are the representatives here that are standing in this gap and defending President Trump and defending you, the American people, at the end of the day. This is ultimately about the United States of America. And we want to make sure to protect and defend that. And as my colleagues have said, we will not back down. We won't be intimidated. President Trump will not be intimidated. You, the American people, should not be intimidated. You, the press, should cover this fairly and should know that this matters to election integrity, and it matters to the future of our nation. So we have given you an overview, but recognize this is not a court of law. We will get there, and we have time, and we have constitutional provisions that will step in when we show the corruption and the irredeemably challenged and overturned votes that are absolutely corrupt in all of these counties. It is irredeemably compromised. We will show that, but you have to give us that opportunity. This has been just our opening statement, and we have an opportunity to get there, and we have time, and we will do that. This is the United States of America, and we stand proudly for President Donald J. Trump. Thank you. One more point. Yep. The world is watching this. 
I have gotten multiple emails from people in other countries who watch the same pattern happen there. We have witness testimony that the same things were done in those countries as this was exported from Venezuela and by Maduro and by Mr. Chavez and by Cuba. And of course, we know China also has a substantial presence in Venezuela and substantial interest in making sure that President Trump does not continue in office. This is the consummate foreign interference in our election in the most criminal way you can possibly imagine. It must be shut down. We know, for example, that one of the Dominion's highest level employees or officers went to Detroit himself to man the Detroit Operations Center where he could watch the votes coming in real time and decide what file folder in the system <clears throat> to put those votes into. That's why you see massive spikes after hours when people were told that all the votes were in and all the votes were counted. Many Dominion employees have already reached out to us to tell us the truth. They are Americans who want to ensure election integrity like we do. I would encourage every Dominion or Smartmatic employee who is fed up with the corruption in this country to come forward as soon as possible because these are serious federal offenses that I am confident the Department of Justice will be in pursuit of in very short order if they are not already. All right, a few uh, questions. Yeah, uh, Mayor Giuliani, uh, this sort of reminds us of 30 years ago, uh, they had federal judges doing consent decrees over elections, so you had a federal judge overseeing uh, the election booth, you know, this is old Chicago days. Will you be asking that in Georgia, where you have two, the two Senate races, to have the, the U.S. District Court judges and federal authorities monitoring elections? I, I can't say what's going to be in done Montgomery about. In Montgomery County, we have sort of a um, Operation Grey Lord. I'm sorry, I did, in what Montgomery county? County, Pennsylvania, and yes. Atlanta, there's sort of an Operation Grey Lord. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you were informed yep. of that. I, I, I know about it. I, I really can't give you an opinion on that. Uh, I think, obviously, Every election official should learn something from this and be very, very careful with the, with the next election. I know this is a lot of information that we've given you, uh, probably because we're frustrated with what we keep reading and hearing in the censored press, which is that we have no evidence, we have no specifics, we have no backup of what we're saying, and you largely ignore the affidavits that are filed, whether you agree or disagree with an affidavit, it's evidence. You can't say, I mean, you're just lying to the American people when you say there's no evidence. Uh, Sidney was giving you information that come from affidavits from other people that are given under oath. I was explaining things to you from affidavits that come from other people, American citizens, who swear under oath that they saw 100,000 ballots come in and that they were all for Joe Biden and that I should point out now that Sidney has spoken that those happened just around the time that the Dominion or Smartmatic people called a halt to the election and then you can also trace it with a very big spike in the vote count at exactly that time. Right up. So what we're telling you is supported by evidence. And uh, we're, we're going to have to present these because of the procedures that exist according to the different voting laws of the different states. For example, you asked us about Wisconsin. We have to first create a contest in Wisconsin before we can move to bringing a uh, fulsome federal lawsuit. The contest from everything I can see, is going to overturn the vote because it's going to show somewhere around 100,000 illegal ballots in two counties that Biden carried by 75, 80 percent. And you know how close Wisconsin is. And what I'm talking about is the absentee ballots for which there were no applications. And that's not just a small matter. The reason for the application and the reason to keep the, all these things together is precisely to avoid what the Democrats did in this election, which is to misuse the absentee ballot process and the mail-in ballot process in order to cheat. So they really cheated in two respects. 
They cheated with the machines. It, 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 instead of asking me, are we going to bring a lawsuit in Wisconsin, which we will if we have to, you should have asked me, and you should be more astounded by the fact that our votes are counted in Germany and in Spain by a company owned by affiliates of Chavez and Maduro. Did you ever believe that was true? Did any of you here believe that that was possible? Of course it's not. Of course it shouldn't be possible. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have time to develop all that in time to fill the requirements of all these cases. We have enough evidence without that to overturn this election. We have it from the affidavits of American citizens. But that's a matter of national security that we're talking about now. Very, very serious matter of national security. Please don't make light of it. And don't act like you knew it. Don't act like it isn't a surprise. If that's not a headline tomorrow, then you don't know what a headline is. There isn't a single person in this country that would have believed that we have states that are stupid enough to have our vote sent out of this country. There's, you couldn't possibly believe that the company counting our vote with control over our vote is owned by two Venezuelans who were allies of Chavez, are present allies of Maduro, with a company whose chairman is a close associate and business partner of George Soros, the biggest donor to the Democrat Party, the biggest donor to Antifa, and the biggest donor to Black Lives Matter. My goodness, what do we have to do to get you to give our people the truth? Yes. The last part was, do they work with defense groups, with defense groups and the CIA? First, I've, I'm in charge of this investigation with Sydney and the people that you see here. Um, there's been no pressure to stop investigating Dominion. No one's in fact, there's to stop no there's pressure to go f go as fast as we can. I mean, I think there was uniform shock when we first heard it. I think when I first heard it, I didn't believe it until Sidney showed me the documents. And in fact, I feel kind of stupid, and you all should, because all you had to do is go online and find out that Smartmatic is owned by Venezuelans close to Chavez. You can Google it. Well, unless they take it down. I preserved it, so you can find it. Not, you know, and, and by the way, the Coomer character, who is close to Antifa, took off all of his social media. Aha, but we kept it. We've got it. The man is a vicious, vicious man. He wrote horrible things about the president. He is completely, he is completely biased. He's completely warped. And he specifically says that they're going to fix this election. I don't know what you need to wake you up to do your job and inform the American people, whether you like it or not, of the things they need to know. This is real. It is not made up. It is not, there's nobody here that engages in fantasies. I've tried 100 cases. I prosecuted some of the most dangerous criminals in the world. I know crimes. I can smell them. You don't have to smell this one. I can prove it to you 18 different ways. I can prove to you that he won Pennsylvania by 300,000 votes. I can prove to you that he won Michigan by probably 50,000 votes. When I went to bed on election night, he was ahead in all those states, every single one of those states. How is it they all turned around? Every single one of them turned around? Or is it more consistent that there was a plan to turn them around? And since there are witnesses who say there was a plan to turn them around, and it kind of begs credulity to say that it all happened in every single state, my goodness, this is how you win cases in a courtroom. <laughs> Block or delay certification so the GOP can pick their own electors? Is that the end game here? 
<laughs> our goal here is to go around the iron curtain of censorship. That uh, what publication are you with? CNN. <laughs> <laughs> it's to go around uh, the outrageous iron curtain of censorship and get facts to the American people that if you were a fair and honest network, you'd have been reporting for the last two weeks. These are facts. These are things that actually happened. These people really wrote these affidavits. These affidavits are really part of the public record. You're concealing them. You're covering them up. And our role here is to do your job because you don't do it. Chanel? Come on, you have to have a little humor. We have, we have witnesses who have actually reported. Where are you, FBI? And nothing's happened as a result of it. Uh, I don't know where the FBI has been for the last three years. I have no idea where the FBI has been for the last four years. Explain to me how the FBI concealed a memo in the hand of Brennan to Obama saying that Hillary basically made up the Russian collusion plot. They, they withheld that for four years and cost our country $40 million and two impeachment, one attempted, one actual, and then an acquittal proceeding. I don't know where they've been. I don't know where they were on the hard drive. They got it eight, ten months ago. There are clear crimes revealed on it. Didn't do anything with that. I don't know where they are now. Our country has had its ballots counted, calculated, and manipulated in a foreign country with a company controlled by friends of an enemy of the United States. What do we have to do to get the FBI to wake up? Maybe we need a new agency to protect us. I have no idea. In if, I, if I might speak for just a minute. In terms of the level of corruption we are looking at here, we have no idea how many Republican or Democratic candidates in any state across the country paid to have the system rigged to work for them. These people didn't do this just to take control. They make one heck of a lot of money off of it. Think about the global interests behind your own news organizations. Think about the pressure being brought to bear on, from the social media companies to shut down free speech on any challenge to the election. This is a massive, well-funded, coordinated effort to deprive we, the people of the United States, of our most fundamental right under the Constitution to preserve this republic that we all cherish. It is of the greatest concern. It is the, it is the 1775 of, of our generation and, and beyond. Sydney, yes. of um, our votes being held and processed, tabulated overseas, there's reports that there was a piece of hardware, possibly a server, picked up in Germany. Is that true, and is it related to this? Th that is true. It is somehow related to this, but I do not know whether good guys got it or bad guys got so it. we don't know who picked it up. Why Sydney, are you, why are you not requesting a recount in Wisconsin so where the county said use Dominion system? System. Says, sure I can only hear one person at the yeah. time. I'm going to take the one with the hands raised. I'm with just the news. Which yes. Um, so question for you, Sydney. First, on the issue of the machines, do you plan to have, uh, are you seeking a court order to either seize or subpoena or just to gain access to any of these machines in any of these contested districts? Have you begun that process? Uh, and when can we expect a timeline on that? And then for you, Mr. Mayor, you mentioned in Wisconsin and in Michigan these issues of overvoting. Um, where can we learn more about the, you're saying 150, 200 percent? Up to 350 percent in some sure. places. Where, where would we get access to that data? And then uh, to what extent were those uh, people who showed up to vote in person? Uh, because in Michigan, for example, they did allow same-day same registration. Yes, well, the same day registration causes problems with the vote signature and the registration itself. That's a whole different system that makes it impossible, really, to validate the signature. I mean, one person could sign the same name. Uh, I, mean, I, I mean, I could sign John Smith, I could sign Kay Smith, I could sign, you know, on both things and run 50 ballots that way. 
and we've got some evidence of that being done as well. Um, Rudy, do you want to speak to the other part of it? Sure. Uh, we have now um, three overvote uh, analysis is done, one for Pennsylvania, one for Michigan, and one for Wisconsin. We're in the process, oh, I'm sorry, Georgia. We're in the process of doing the others. Uh, I'll, I'll check to see if it's um, appropriate to, for us to make it public. Well, I imagine it is, but you, you could actually do it. <laughs> yeah. You could do it yourself. Uh, a lot of the analysis comes from the real-time data that came through to the news medias the, the night and following the election. And some entrepreneurs out there have started crunching data themselves in addition to multiple experts who could easily recognize with the mathematical brain that I do not have uh, the, the beyond ex explicable deviations to the point of mathematical impossibility that 186,000 votes come in at once all for Joe Biden. That's like flipping a coin 186,000 times and it lands on the same, it lands on heads every time. That does not happen. There is no reasonable explanation for the upshoots, the straight lines up. I'm not even talking about a, an angle. I'm talking about some massive straight lines up in the vote tallies in the middle of the night after they've supposedly stopped counting. And that's when the Dominion operators went in and injected votes and changed the whole system. And it affects votes around the country, around the world, and all kinds of massive interests of globalist dictators, corporations, you name it. Everybody's against us except President Trump and we the people of the United <laughs> States. <laughs> You've spoken of unleashing the Kraken. Is the country ready for this? I mean, Americans should be astonished at what you're saying here today. Is the country on the verge of an electoral breakdown? Uh, we've already had it. We have already had that electoral breakdown. But the Constitution, as Jenna explains, has provisions in it for how you fix this. And there should never be another election conducted in this country. I don't care if it's for local dog catcher using a Dominion machine and Smartmatic software. We have got to have an American company that uses paper ballots that we can all verify so every one of us can see that our vote is our vote. Why are you not requesting recounts in Wisconsin counties that use the Dominion software? You're requesting recounts in two counties that don't use the software at all. Beca all it, it, this case is not only about, remember, this case didn't begin with Dominion. This case began, and this case can be proven the old-fashioned way. It can be proven based on just good old-fashioned democratic tactics that go back to Mayor Daley in the 1960s when he held the vote back in Chicago so that he could elect John F. Kennedy. Or as recently as last year when they held the vote back in Palm Beach County and Broward County in order to see if they could steal that election for the Senate and governor and then got caught manufacturing ballots. Democrats have been doing this for years on a small scale. When they passed a, when they passed a the mail-in voter statute, which all of a sudden multiplied by 10 times the number of mail-in votes, they realized they could have a field day. They could do precisely what Jimmy Carter and uh, Secretary Baker warned us about. All you, all you have to do is own an election board, and you can get away with it. And unlike what Sydney is talking about, where you could have a paper trail, a paper ballot, I tried to point out to you the minute that you separate the outer envelope from the ballot, you can no longer trace it, which is why the count, whatever the count in Georgia today is, is totally ridiculous. They're counting the same fraudulent ballots one more time. Yeah. Mass, and we're still very close. Mr. Mass, so far, no single court has found evidence of fraud. That's got to be disappointing for you. Have you got evidence of fraud? Well, it's bu it is about something. Let, let's go from the big picture to the smaller picture. The most important thing here is that this has been a massive attack on the integrity of the voting system in the greatest democracy on earth. The people who did this have committed one of the worst crimes that I've ever that I've I've, I've ever seen or observed. One of the things we're the most proud of in this country is that we've been such a long-standing democracy based on the right to vote. 
They have trashed the right to vote. They've dishonored the right to vote. They've destroyed the right to vote in their greed for power and money. And there's no doubt about it. This was not an individual idea of 10 or 12 Democrat bosses. This is a plan. You would have to be a fool not to realize that. They do the same thing in exactly the same way in 10 big Democrat controlled, in most cases, crooked city. And when I say crooked city, go look at how many of their officials have gone to jail in the last 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 years that they have dominated and destroyed those cities. They picked the places where they could get away with it. They picked the places where whether or not Republicans testified to something, judges would just dismiss it because judges are appointed politically and too many of them are hacks. They picked places where they could get a sheriff that refused to, inf to, uh, to enforce a court order. When we got a court order that we could be 10 feet closer, our representatives were told, if you try to do it, I'll arrest you. Part, part, part one, part one, it began as a national conspiracy. Clearly, that evidence emerged very, very quickly. The minute I saw that it was the same thing in 10 states, just using logic, I said, this can't be an accident. And then when I, what I was surprised about is the dimension of it. I mean, not inspecting almost 700,000 ballots is astounding. Honestly, I don't know what Joe Biden is aware of or not aware of. And I mean that as a lawyer, not trying to be, not trying to be cute. I've watched him. I've observed him. Um, I, I honestly don't know how much he's aware. I don't know how much he decides and how much things are decided for him. So I, 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 I address one other thing to your question about the process. Your question is fundamentally flawed when you're asking where is the evidence. You clearly don't understand the legal process. What we have asked for in the court is to not have the certification of false results. And so to say, hold on a minute, we have evidence that we will present to the court. We haven't had the opportunity yet to present that to the court. We're giving you an overview and a preview of what we've discovered, but no court yet has has had we've had that opportunity. Really so when we have a we've had and we have fraud allegations pending. So what we've asked for are temporary restraining orders or injunctions to not certify false results. We're very happy that Michigan. Why the reason we dismissed the, that lawsuit today is because the Michigan. Uh, county in Wayne County, they're not going to certify that because 71% of counties have inconsistent data. No person in this room or in this country should want states to rush through and coronate a president with false results. We have to make sure that the results are accurate. We'll That's what we will prove. Two, two more questions. The Secretary of State says that that, that, that can't actually happen, that those votes can't be rescinded, and that the certification in Michigan currently stands. The Secretary of State where? In Michigan. Yeah, well, there are problems in Michigan. Well, Follow the money. Follow the political party, ma'am. I mean, you're actually seriously going to uh, want me to take seriously the Secretary of State of Michigan? Well, when when Michigan, when, when, when Michigan, when the Secretary of State of Michigan never bothered to find out that the votes in her state were being, count, being counted in Germany by a Venezuelan company, and you want me to take her seriously or him seriously? I mean, I was, I was in government. Uh, if I were the governor of that state, I'd fire everybody that was involved in this election. They didn't come and tell me that my state was going to be embarrassed, made a fool of, because I'm sending my votes of people in Michigan over to Germany to be counted by a company that is owned by people who are allies of Maduro and Chavez. By the way, Carolyn Maloney, who wrote that, is my congresswoman. A Democrat pointed that out. They didn't do the darndest bit of, of due diligence. If you bought a $10 million company, you would have done more due diligence, due diligence than that. Maybe they're incompetent, or maybe they didn't want to know. But you're not going to have me take seriously anything that comes from anyone involved in the election the way it was conducted in Michigan. The 
the Secretary of State can say whatever she wants to say. Of course she's going to say that. She's a Democrat. She could also credit the affidavits of the two people and say that the board is tied and therefore the vote hasn't been certified. So because she's a Democrat, she's saying that. Do you think she has any credibility having run the kind of election they ran in Michigan? You think anyone in that government has credibility after using a machine and fooling their citizens? There can't be a person in Michigan who thought their vote was being sent outside the United States so somebody could play with it. I mean, it's disgraceful what the government of Michigan did to its citizens. Absolutely disgraceful. Mr. Mayor, Last question. Mr. Mayor you have uh, alleged... I'm just to go back to the citizens. Are you going to be able to get your hands on um, the citizens' affidavits that they submitted in support of the vote? Are you going to be able to see what, when, where... We're not... We are limited in what we can do. We're not the FBI. We're not the government. We don't have that kind of subpoena power. We don't have the power to just go subpoena anything we want. The government does. Uh, we would have to subpoena in line with a case. Our first case, we're asking for that authority in Pennsylvania and in Michigan. But you have to get that authority from the court. We're private citizens. We're not the government. If, if I were the government, like I used to be, there'd probably be a lot of people arrested by now. Because there's plenty of probable cause. Plenty of probable cause. Right, thank you, everybody. No, no, no. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take. Uh, you alleged that uh, Donald Trump has won by a, a landslide. Um, we've we've seen that a lot of your um, lawsuits and, and, in fact, lawyers have been kind of dropping like flies. What do you say to those people who call this a Russiagate 2.0 just on the other side? Why didn't this? And also, why didn't this? Where, where, what, what, what uh, fake network do you come from? I don't come from a fake network. In fact, I am completely independent. Have no one above. Oh my goodness! Well, first of all, first, first of all, our cases haven't been dismissed. We only have. Over 20, 20, um, Look at the plaintiffs who were involved in this. It's not our case, ma'am. Don't lie to people. Ma'am, 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 you are lying. You're lying. You're lying. Well, continue to lie. I'm not gonna. Ma'am, 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 ma'am. Okay. Let me answer the question. Let me answer the question. The answer to the question is, we don't have a lot of lawsuits. We only have three. Our lawsuits have not been dropped all over the place. We just, we just, we, we, okay. Well, you're a totally discourteous person. I'm going to finish my answer. So, I'm going to finish my answer. The fact is, we have very, very few lawsuits. The lawsuits you're talking about have been brought by private individuals and groups. Most of them were dismissed for lack of standing, probably correctly, because they were brought before the election took place. The election is now over. The only lawsuit we have withdrawn is the one where we got the relief that we wanted, and that's the one in Michigan. We also have another lawsuit in Michigan that will accomplish the other objectives of what we want to do in Michigan. So it's silly to have two competing lawsuits. The only lawyer that left a case left because he was threatened. His family was threatened. His children were threatened. And so was the other lawyer. Yeah, that's true. We have a, a little difficulty getting lawyers because our lawyers get threatened with being killed because of the ridiculous way in which you cover this and the ridiculous way in which you cover. You haven't seen how I've covered this. No, what I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about everybody, but I get a pretty good sense from you, the way you handle yourself, how you cover it. All right, we're finished with you now. One last question. One last question from a... One last question. One last question. One last question from a reasonable civil person. Yeah, you are not. Yes. I'm not a reasonable person? No, her. She isn't. Well, I'll, we'll find out. I'm from the Daily Caller, for the record. Oh, there we go. If the courts don't let you present these cases like Jenna just said, will you give the entire bulk of the evidence to the media to review? And if so, when? Or are you going to drag this thing out like the Hunter Biden hard drive again? We're not going to drag it out. I mean, it's ridiculous for you to say we're dragging it out. Al Gore, Al Gore had a lot more time than we've had, and we've had two weeks to, to investigate. So that's also completely unfair to say we're dragging it out. Also, if we're going to present things in court, if we present it to you, judges are not going to be very happy with us. And finally, I have to tell you, our witnesses don't want to be exposed to the tender mercies of a vicious press. 
I have great difficulty getting those witnesses that I did reveal to allow me to do it. They don't trust you. They don't like you. They think you put their lives in jeopardy with the spin that you put on what's going on here and with the unfairness in which you cover it. It's not easy to reveal the things that they tell me. So the answer is no. The answer is I can't do it because I can't, I can't put a witness's life in jeopardy or a person who thinks there's life in jeopardy. This woman tells me we have lawyers dropping out of the case. We have lawyers dropping out of the case because they're being threatened with destruction of their careers, destruction of their livelihood, and in some cases, destruction of their lives. That comes about because of the hysterical way in which you have covered Donald Trump and his administration. But we're going to change all that. We're going to go to court. We're going to prove it in court. I would love to release all the information that I have. I would love to give it to you all, except most of you wouldn't cover it. A few of you would. And then we'd have half the American people probably informed. The censorship that is going on in this country right now by big tech and by big media is almost as dangerous as the election fraud that we're revealing. Maybe just as dangerous. We're headed to a very bad place. And it is not inappropriate that a Venezuelan company counted our votes. Thank you.